एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम many of us have studied the newton second law of motion and the question that comes to the mind of the student is if the frame of reference change then will this newton's second law changes so the answer to the question will be provided in today's video welcome to s chand academy and i am anmol bhatia today we will be learning about a special case of newton's second law of motion for detailed conceptual clarity you can refer to this book by s chand publishing the link of the book is there in the description box below the course is engineering mechanics and the module that we are covering in this video is module number 1 the topic that is to be covered is form invariance of newton's second law of motion form invariance is the topic that is to be covered in today's lecture before coming to the invariance or form invariance topic let us first understand what is newton's second law of motion although in my previous videos i have talked about newton's second law of motion but for the sake of clarity i am again telling that the rate of change of this momentum part is directly proportional to the external force which is acting on the body so the relationship between force and momentum is provided by newton's second law of motion the law basically states that force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum and here the momentum part is f equals to the derivative of mass and velocity so what you can do you can derivate this particular component for the two categories one when the mass is constant and the another one when the mass is not constant so if i derivate it considering both the cases so f is directly proportional to first function which is mass as the same part and then the derivative of the second plus the second function into the derivative of the first function so you can see that if the mass is constant then this term vanishes and you will only end up with this term which is mass multiplied by the acceleration so for this f equals to ma would be the case of uh, newton's second law of motion and if uh the velocity is constant then this first term vanishes and you are only uh end up with the second term which is f equals to v dm by dt where dm by dt is the rate of uh mass flow mass flow rate basically so this is as far as the newton's second law is concerned now let us talk about the form invariance so in the initial part of the video i have talked about Uh, a question that uh, will this newton second law of motion change if the frame of reference changes so the answer to that question is there in this topic the topic is form invariance and this topic states that the newton second law is unchanged in two frame of references so if the frame of reference is changing then this newton second law will not change so there is no change in the newton second law when this frame of reference changes so this is particularly related to form invariance of newton's second law the main idea is to prove that how this newton's second law is unchanged when the frame of reference changes so let us consider uh, an a case in which i have this cartesian plane which is x axis the horizontal axis the y axis which is the vertical which is this axis and the z axis which is the third axis so i have three axis x y and z axis now what happens i have an object which is this object having a position which is p x y z and 
time frame so this is the initial position of uh, the object and the frame of reference is changed now i have the observer which is observing this particular point from the o uh, point now this frame of reference changes to o dash so earlier the frame of reference was o x o z and o y now this frame of reference changes from o to o dash so this frame of reference changes from o dash x dash o dash z dash and o dash y dash and this r indicates the vector which is in connection with o and the initial point p and r dash is the vector that indicates a connection between o dash and the same frame of reference the same point with the coordinates x dash y dash z dash and t dash this got changed because the frame of reference is changed okay so this is the case when we want to look for the change of reference frame we have to assume certain things now one thing is uh, the r that we have assumed r is the magnitude of the vector which is there then the frame is moving at a constant velocity which is v so this is moved at a constant velocity v and uh, the distance if is to be found out that would be velocity multiplied by time so if i Uh, multiply both the terms i'll get this distance which is v multiplied by t so i have this v value which is the constant velocity and i have this distance which is v multiplied by t so i have these terms which are related in in order to derive the form invariance part of the newton second law of motion now we are starting the derivation so the derivation is uh there in between uh getting a relationship that proves that the there is no change in the newton second law of motion for that we have already uh, defined the symbols which are there in the diagram and uh, this vt indicates the distance this r dash indicates the magnitude of this vector which is responsible for the change of reference frame and r is the initial reference frames uh, magnitude of the point now if you observe it closely you will get a triangle which is o p and o dash so o o dash p is a triangle that you are getting and here i am applying the vector triangle law so i'll get r value is equal to op value which is r dash and plus the base which is vt so i'll get this op value plus vt as r now if i substitute op value op value is r dash so if i substitute r dash here and vt remains same so vt is as it is so the expression amongst r r dash and vt is like this then r dash value if i find out from this equation r dash value will be r minus vt so the value of r dash comes out to be r minus vt now the question comes in that what has to be done with this r dash and how can we prove that the second law is intact so that uh, derivation that derivation we will cover after the break so we'll take a short break and after the break we'll continue the same derivation now quality learning is easily available at your doorstep s chand academy brings detailed lectures based on aicte curriculum as per the new education policy 2020 so do not forget to subscribe to the s chand academy and access the wide world of knowledge conveniently sitting at your home Stay connected and keep watching S Chand Academy. Happy learning. Welcome back to S Chand Academy. Before going to the break, we have learned about the form invariance of Newton's second law of motion and we were deriving 
the form invariance part of the Newton's second law of motion. So in this part we will be continuing the same derivation. So we have uh, already derived some aspects of the form invariance category of the Newton's second law of motion. Let us revise it again. In this we have uh, talked about the change of reference frame for the derivation. Here the initial reference frame was OX, OY and OZ and there was a particle having the coordinates as X, Y, Z and T. This frame of reference is changing with the speed of V. So V is that velocity with which this frame of reference is changing. So initially the observer was placed at O. Now the observer has changed its position from O to O dash. And the reference frames are changing like OX dash, OZ dash and OY dash. And we have all also defined these symbols R and R dash. These indicates the magnitude of this vector which is there between the initial point and this uh, P point. And here O dash and this P point indicates the R dash value. In order to derive the expression what we did, we have considered this triangle and this triangle is uh, called as the vector triangle and we have considered this expression in order to uh, derive the final expression and that is R which is this side, this side is equal to Vt plus OP. So OP plus Vt value is the expression. And then in place of OP, I have written this R dash, VT remains same. So from there, what we can find out is R dash. So R dash was R equals to R dash equals to R minus VT. Now we will continue further. Now what we need to do, we need to derivate this with respect to time because we are considering the time frame also. So we are derivating it with respect to time. So differentiating the entire equation with respect to time, we will get dr dash over dt equals to dr by dt minus the derivative of vt is v. Again you derivate it with respect to time, you will get the double derivative which is d2r dash by dt square that is equal to d2r by dt square. So we will get d2r dash by dt square over uh, that is equal to d2r by dt square. So this particular thing which is the derivative of this distance, the double derivative of the distance is called as the acceleration and here also the double derivative of the distance is called as an acceleration. So a dash is equal to a that means acceleration is having the same value irrespective of the change of frame for the particle. So if I multiply with mass I will get the force. So whether I write MA or I write MA dash I will get the same value of force that is the second law of motion. So the second law of motion states that the ultimately it derives that F equals to MA. Here A dash equals to A indicates that the second law does not change within when the frame of reference changes. So this is as far as the form invariance of the Newton's second law. So this is the category of the form invariance. In this I have already told you how this derivation has taken place. So we have considered the triangle which is the vector triangle and the vector triangle consists of these three sides in which R is equal to Vt plus R dash. So I have taken the sum of, sum of all these, uh, these two terms and which is equal to R then I have differentiated the same and uh, I have derivated it again so that acceleration comes into picture and uh, ultimately we have uh, experienced that this A dash equals to A. So this indicates that irrespective of the change of frame the second law is same. Now what else can be derived from this particular equation? So we need to derive uh, one more aspect from this particular case. One aspect was the proof, uh, the derivation of uh, the, sim the same Newton second law, uh, which is having no change, which is called as form invariability. And uh, we would be deriving some more equations from the similar derivation. 
Here I have already told you that R equals to OP plus VT from the vector triangle and R equals to R dash plus VT. So from the previous case we have derived that R dash equals to R minus VT and now we will be using the positions of the particle which is this particle. So the position of the particle would be taken into picture that means R dash and R would be taken into the consideration. So if the vector is x, y, z and t, so considering the position vectors which is x dash i plus y dash j plus z dash k would be the position vector for r dash and the position vector for r it would be x i plus y j plus z k where i j k indicates the unit vectors. So here in place of r dash I have substituted this x dash i plus y dash j plus z dash k and in place of r I have substituted this x i plus y j plus z k and v t is v t but the component would be i component for v t because v t is there in the horizontal plane. So I have considered this v t in the horizontal plane part. Then v t was having i here x was having i so I have clubbed these two so that x minus vt comes and i vector is separate then yj and zk. So from here we get a relationship that can be obtained from comparing these two equations. So what is the relationship ultimately? The first relationship that can be derived from here is the comparison of x dash and x minus vt. So x dash would be equal to x minus vt, y dash is equal to y and z dash equal to z. So the, these equations are called as Galilean transformation equations that would be important for the future uh, numerical sections. So this is the uh, Galilean transformation equation that is being derived from the form invariance category of the Newton's second law. So we come to the end of this lecture wherein we studied about the form invariance part of Newton's law of motion which is Newton's second law of motion and also we derived the same with the help of certain mathematical expressions and also we derived Galilean equations from the same. For detailed conceptual clarity you can refer to this book by S. Chan Publishing the link of the book is there in the description box below. If you find the video interesting, like, share, subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for future updates. Thank you. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.